Okay, so I'm trying to build a light in the attic emoji just with these vector shapes. This is what I have so far. If I want to turn my guides off, I just do command semicolon. That turns guides on and off. Also, when you're on your move tool, it will give you all of these kind of helpful measurements and things sometimes. They show up as bright pink. They're not part of your image like this. <laughs> it's just showing you how your shapes are placed. And it's, it looks like way cooler than what you intended, right? It makes it look like there's internal architecture going on. Like, look at that, a golden rectangle all the way. I don't know. But basically, this just helps you really refine your graphics if you need to. Now, remember, you can go rogue at any time and stop looking at your sketch to make your, your shapes. So, for instance... If I don't want to have this kind of boxy rectangle that's curved on two ends for the eyes, I can just choose to use ellipses instead. Because I think those might look better, right? And because mine's more childish, you know, I think I like that better than these. So I'm going to change it. And I can change the expression just with the tiniest movement of these. I can still be inspired by my sketch, but I can change my eyes quite a bit. And if I want to make sure they're lined up, I can hit command, semicolon, show my guides, and then drag a new guide out for my ruler. And I can see that those eyes are perfectly lined up. Right? They'll snap to them. And then I, I need to build my, uh, my rooftop here a little bit. And I need to make an expression. So I, I do like the, the kind of weird slash expression. And it's a, that's a complicated shape to make. So what I'm going to do is steal this shape that I use for the eyebrow, duplicate it, bring it down. Looks very much like a poop, right? Hit Command-T. And I'm going to taper it on one end. And I'm going to do that with warp. So warp can also be used to simplify shapes. Especially to kind of pinch edges together. And you can do it in several steps. So that's one. Command T. Warp. Got to find kind of the right simplification of it. And then Command T. Warp again. And if I made it worse, I can do Command Z. <laughs> And now I'll just try to scale it, right? Holding down shift, make it kind of work for my expression. Maybe even rotate it a little bit. Command semicolon, turn off guides. That kind of works. Now you guys are going to find, just like I always do when I'm demoing this, that when you warp a lot, you get really, really complicated kind of wavy shapes, right? That aren't maybe as clean as you want. So that's your trial. And then maybe you approach it a different way and try it again, where you don't have to warp so many times. So start with just basic shrinking and tilting and then try warping to taper so you're not creating so many anchor points. But with shape tools, you can't delete your anchor points and you can't draw a custom shape vector, not in the parameters of this exercise, right? You just have to use the basic shapes as given and then just really practice free transform.
This is to make you very familiar with these tools and a little bit more confident of your work. Okay, so that will work. Now we'll get it done. Okay, now how do I build a little window here? So this is, these are following the rules. These are the shape tools. But if you notice at the very bottom here, I don't want you to use the line tool, but at the very bottom here is the custom shape tool. And it's not what you think. You can't just draw whatever shape you need. You would use the pen tool for that, and we're not using that yet. Using the custom shape tool, you're going to see the custom shape options that can be brought in from a vector library. But these are the ones that come in with Photoshop. If you have 2023 that you're using, you have a slightly different list than 2024. Strangely, they're incredibly specific in, 20, in Photoshop 2024. I would really prefer the ones that are in PhotoP. The custom shapes in PhotoP are like helpful arrows and signs and hearts and stars. But here we have these incredibly ornate ones. And there's no window. That would be great. But you are allowed to use these custom shapes as well. So if I use a boat, for instance, that's a pretty cool shape, right? That's not a square. That's not... Not an ellipse, it's like something in between. So if I use that boat shape, maybe this can help me, especially if I have my guides on, to make a window. And you'll see that once you have your guides on, it will help you center it. It will kind of lock in place. And then I can duplicate it. And then Command T, flip it. Try to get the vertical window. I think it's going to be too wide. So maybe, oh, maybe like this. So I'm going to take this bottom one, hold down Option and Shift, and just scale it in. So that links up, right? Then I'm going to duplicate this one, and then I'm going to do Command-T. And instead of trying to warp it or rotate it, I'm just going to right-click and say Flip It Horizontal. So it'll be the mirror image. And then if I hold down Shift while I move it, it will lock it so it doesn't shift up or down. And then I need a top. So I'm going to Command-J to duplicate, Command-T. Right-click, flip it vertical, so I get the top sash of the window. Hold down Shift while I move it to lock it. And then Command-T, hold down Option and Shift to squeeze it smaller. And then return. Okay, now if I want little crossbars in my window, maybe I want to shrink them a little bit here, I can warp that custom shape and taper it a little bit at the top. And then sometimes it's easier, instead of trying to warp this one to match, just delete this one, and then duplicate this one, Command-T when you're going for symmetry, or Command-J to duplicate, then Command-T, and then flip horizontal, and then hold down Shift, and line it up. Okay, so for crossbars, might be fun to keep using those custom shapes. That really simple boat shape. That's probably the simplest custom shape in Photoshop 2024 that comes built in. But of course, if you're using these vector shapes a lot, you import your own vectors. There are different vector libraries you can buy, you can create your own vectors, and you can load them into the library. But we're going to be learning how to import vectors into Photoshop a lot in this class. But I'm going to use that boat tool again. And I'm just going to create a little crossbar. And then I'm going to duplicate it. Actually, I'm not even going to duplicate it. Delete the duplicate. And I'm just going to use a straight rectangle. And go right down the middle. 
like that. Maybe I don't even want one down the middle. Center it exactly, Command T, shrink it down, holding down Shift. Hit Return. So now this is what I have. And what I think is that the window should maybe be filled with a color that's kind of this light blue behind it. So what I can do is use a square tool. There's a lot of this in vector design, especially flat graphics. I think of it like stained glass, like layering panes of colored glass. And I'm going to change this color to that color, and then I'm going to move it down below these others. And a, a way to do that is command left bracket. Then maybe I want little pink curtains. Wouldn't pink curtains be nice? Don't we all want pink curtains? So I'm going to use the ellipse tool. I'm going to overlap that, and I'm going to make it pink. And this time I don't have anything to steal from, so I'm just going to make my own color from these color selectors. Do kind of a salmon color, more magenta -y pink. That's pretty good. Maybe brighten it a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to warp that. Right click, free transform path, right click, warp. And use my warp to tuck it behind that window sill. So it's not going, so I'm not coloring outside of the lines. Right? Hit return, and then move it behind the other window sills, either by clicking and dragging it or by using command left bracket. And I just missed a tiny bit. Oh, I thought I did. There's a little artifact, but no, I'm okay. Ah, but I can see the blue peeking through just a little bit. So I click on the blue, command T, and all I'm going to do is just move that in a little bit more. All right. Where'd my pink go? <laughs> did I move it too much? Look at my history. What happened? There's my pink. Yeah, I never deleted it. So it's called Rectangle 3. Oh, I just need to move this behind. So Command Left Bracket. There we go. Now maybe I like that. Maybe I want to warp it and make it look like fabric by having it bow in and out, kind of like that. All right? And then maybe I want to add a highlight. Ooh, getting really fancy. And we saw that with our party hat, the highlight on the party hat, right? Simple enough. It's still flat design. I'm just going to duplicate the pink. I'm going to Command-T, make it a lot smaller. Hold down Shift and Option and kind of warp it smaller. And then I'm going to pick a lighter color. So that's where the color selector really helps because you can just push the same color lighter. In a few different ways. Then I can kind of move this and I can warp it. I don't want to get too complicated with my shading. So I'm just going to do a little band of highlight. Okay, now I'm going to take both of those. And by holding down Shift, I can select both of them together. This is called a compound path. And then I put them in a folder group. So that's a group. Now I have two vectors within that group. But that allows me to command J and duplicate the group. Whoops. And as long as I select the group and not the individual vector, which it helps to turn off auto select, or you can set up auto select for group instead of layer, then I can move it together. And then I can also flip it and transform it together. The only thing you lose on a compound path is the ability to warp. But you can still do all the other transforms. And I can have it match exactly, or maybe I tilt it a little bit, give it a little bit of variation, because curtains aren't exactly the same. But I want to tuck it behind that windowsill. What if I want to highlight in the window? Well, let's, let's take this shape that I made for the mouth, duplicate it, turn it into a much lighter shape. 